Hello, I'm Kayla and let's talk about the castanet. So the when I first think about the castanet, I think about my mom uh, dancing flamenco uh, while playing the castanets. I do not know how to play the castanets, however. Um, she inspired me to delve into the origin of the castanet. So that is what we will, we will be talking about today. So the castanet has two shells um, for each castanet. One is held on the left and one is held on the right. The left is called the macho castanet and the right is called the hembra castanet. So the right has more of a high pitched tone and it's more feminine sounding. So that was called the hembra and then the macho is more masculine and hollow um, sounding deeper. So that's how they get their names. Um, there's ears at the top of the castanet. That's where the two edges meet, where the string is tied. And the hollow portion on the inside of the castanet is called the, um, the sound box. Um, this is where the sound is emitted and is projected through the castanet. Um, so the castanets first originally came from the Phoenicians uh, about three millenniums ago. Um, they were created by wood, uh, just typical wood, but Spain would later in the 1930s um, and the 1920s be introduced to the castanet and create them with, um, with hazel. So, the root of castanet, castaña, is um, hazel. It translates to hazel. So that is what they would make the castanet out of. They would make it out of hazel wood, while the Phoenicians would make it out of just regular sticks and they would use it for um, religious practices, religious um, um, rituals while in Spain they would use it for dance, they would use it for music, it even made its way into classical music and film. Um, so according to Duke University, it made its way to Spain through um, its trade through the Iberian Peninsula where it would make its way through um, the Mediterranean, Latin America, and um, eventually to Europe as well. So the fusion of the castanets and flamenco first started, according to Duke University, um, by Antonia Merce y Luque, and she was a famous um, Spanish uh, flamenco dancer after, or she would become one. Uh, she started off as a ballerina. However, in the 1920s, she would study Spanish music. Um, and she would go to Paris and perform, and that is where she created her fame um, with flamenco, and she would use the castanets. Alike, dancing in flamenco, the castanet has influenced the world in classical music. Um, so according to El Palacio and Andaluz Santiago Murcia, who was a well-known composer and guitarist, um, he composed a piece starring the uh, castanets called Hakaras. And he would also create other fandangos uh, using a classical guitar and castanets. Um, so Murica would use his influence um, as an influential guitarist and composer to get castanets more mainstreamed in Spain. Um, so he had a heavy influence. And in the movies too, uh, the castanets became extremely influential and were considered visual gold in the 1930s, which was when sound wasn't completely introduced yet. So um, according to Gran Gala Flamenco, the flamenco dancer Carmen Amaya drew attention to the castanets in one of her films where she was presented dancing with the castanets, all visual, um, but she drew a lot of attention through this film. It was called La Hija de Juan Simón, and that was in 1935. The shared appreciation for the castanet uh, has moved the world of music. It's moved the, dan the dance world in folklore and 
in movies and this is not just in Spanish culture. I mean, it's derived from Spanish culture, but it has spread so much more into the Latin communities and or culture into um, European culture. And it was actually very profound in Paris. Um, so it has proven to be a very versatile and important artifact in Spanish history and Spanish culture, European culture. Um, so now, after learning all of this about the Castanet, I hope that you, whenever you think of Spain, Latin culture, um, or even European culture, I hope that you remember the Castanet and the influence that um, it had globally in the art community. Thank you.